Before I go over the circuit diagram here, I want to make the same statement as I did in the last section, that you should ensure all power sources are shut down first before wiring anything up. If you have been following along so far and are SSH'd or logged directly into your Pi, then that means shutting it down with a sudo shutdown command at this point to wire up the circuit, as I do not recommend hooking anything up to the pins while your Pi is powered on. Okay, with that statement out of the way, let's take a look at the circuit diagram. You'll notice that it's the exact same circuit that I used with the Arduino, where there's a single LED, a 220 ohm resistor, a red jumper hooked up to a GPIO pin for power, and a black jumper hooked up to a ground pin to complete the circuit. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, and I have my red jumper hooked up to physical pin number 12 for power, and then a black jumper hooked up to the ground pin, which is physical pin number 20 in this case. Now you may already be aware, but these pins have different names and numbers depending on which system you use to identify them. If you're not sure what pins you need to use, I encourage you to look at a diagram corresponding to the version of your Raspberry Pi. You can easily find them on the web, or navigate to http colon whack whack pi4j.com, and then select the link on the left hand side corresponding to your Pi. I also want to mention that I chose a pin that supports PWM, or pulse with modulation, which I briefly covered in the Arduino section, so if you're not going to use pin number 12 as your power source, but want to fully follow along with the demos coming up, then make sure you select a pin with PWM support. In this particular diagram, they're identified with PWM followed by a number. And once you have your pins figured out and your circuit built, I will meet you in the next lesson to show you how to code this bad boy.